Okay, today's workshop tip is uh, how to solder with Technoloy solder and flux. Um, first things to do is to clean your parts with acetone, make sure they're nice and clean. Um, then I position my parts, to, um, I'll be soldering a um, slip joint bolster to a liner. Position my plots where I want them. And then with a normal carbon pencil, I want to mask the areas that I don't want to get the flux in. So I'm going to get right into that corner, the back of the bolster, onto the liner. Um, so that the, the solder does not run onto my liner. And uh, make positioning of my handle scales difficult. So I'm going to color that area in well right up into the corner and as well the back of the bolster now unlike lead solder this is a tin based solder which does not flow quite as freely as lead bolster does uh, red, uh, lead solder does at least um, but it has the advan advantage of staying bright and also it is considerably stronger than lead, lead uh, solder. I also want to, once I've taken the bolster off, just go slightly underneath the area where the bolster is going to fit, just to make sure that nothing runs um, onto my handle area. Okay, right, now the flux. Now, this flux, it's quite important that you give this a good shake. Um, you need the, the actual flux to mix with the, the, with the solvent, um, otherwise you won't get good results. So, like I always say to the guys, you shake until it feels like your arm wants to fall off and then shake a little bit more. Right, I've given it a good shake. Now, you want to put a drop of uh, this flux on the area where you want to solder. Um, and then give it a good rub and make sure that the whole area is covered where you want to solder. Um, now with this solder, I'm going to put solder on both surfaces prior to putting them together. So I'm fluxing both surfaces. And then I'm going to go to the torch. I'm going to... Um, heat those surfaces up. Now with this process you don't want to put heat directly onto the area that you're soldering. So I'm going to heat the parts from the back and uh, very very gently with a very soft flame and you'll see as the solder heats up it'll tend to bubble then turn white um, and from there it'll start changing color to a, a light brown and then start boiling again. Now you want to catch catch it just before it goes to dark brown. Um, so once it just starts changing color you want to apply your solder to the area. Um, I've got a little rod that, I, that I'll show you that I spread the solder and the excess solder I'll shake off the, off the pot. Um, if you heat the the flux too long and it turns dark brown it tends to um, lose its properties and then you'll have to recoat it with salt with the uh, flux okay as you can see uh, my torch is very very slightly open I'm going to try and capture what happens um, I might have to just lift my camera a little bit okay excuse me Okay, so hopefully you can see the reaction as it takes place. Um, there it's just turned white. I've got a bit of bubbling there. Now I'm just going to wait for a second. For it to start changing color. Okay, there we go. And then I apply the solder. Okay, then I take the rod and just heat it again. And I want to gently spread it over that whole area where I want my bolster to be. And scrape the excess off. Just give it a shake. Get all that excess off. Okay. 
And those bits and pieces that fall onto the ground, um, you can collect those if you want and reuse those pieces. Okay, and I'm happy with that. Okay, and you'll see um, I've got a nice even uh, get that onto the camera even area there. You want, don't want too much there but you want the whole area covered. Okay, with the bolster it just takes a little bit longer to heat up um, but the process is exactly the same. Again, I'm heating the bolster from the, the bottom of the bolster. I don't want to put direct flame onto my flux or onto my solder. Move that out. Now, if it happens that you have areas where the solder seems to not want to take on your part, you can reapply some flux to that area. And I might have a bit of an issue here. Okay, so. I've got a couple of spots, I don't know if you can see that, uh, let's get that in camera. Uh, okay, you'll see on the outer edges, I don't have any solder there, so I'm just going to reapply some flux there, and then go back to the flame. Okay. So now both my liner and the bolster have been um, tinned with the solder. Um, I've now placed the two parts together. Before I do that, I put a little bit more flux um, in between. And that just helps the solder to flow um, when it melts. Okay, I'm now going to heat the parts from the bolster side, which is slightly thicker than the liner. Um, and wait for the, you'll see on the edges the, the, the um, flux starts to boil and you should also see the um, solder starts to melt. Um, I've got two clamps on there, they nice and strong spring loaded clamps and um, maybe not with this one but with bigger components um, or bigger bolsters I you can usually see when the gap actually closes up as the solder melts. Again, I've got a very soft flame, and I'm just going to heat it slowly. Yeah, I'm starting to see it bubble. What you can do is you can actually take um, some of the solder if you just want to test um, your, your, whether your components are warm enough and whether the solder is actually melting is just apply a little bit of solder on the edges and if that tends to melt it's not quite melting yet and then that will indicate that you have reached the right temperature Yeah, I can see that. And there, I'm getting a bit of melting. So, and I can also see on the edges of the the um, flux starting to bubble on the edges. Okay, once I reach that point, I'm just going to put a little bit of heat on the other side, just to make sure that everything's nice and hot. Now the important thing is, once you've done this, you want to leave it to cool down naturally for a while. Um, you don't definitely don't want to stick the pot into, into a bucket of water. Um, the, the sudden change in temperature will cause uh, stress on the joint and it will cause it to delaminate. I hope that's helped some of you guys. Um, and yeah, if you need any further advice on Technoloid uh, flux and solder, feel free to give me a shot.